Hey guys, my name is Ainsley Allen. Um, I am the current sales manager for the Madison District Office, and today I'm going to be talking to you about preparing to be an All-American. So first off, I just want to thank Danny Lewis for um, nominating me to do this talk and Kyle Smith for allowing me to be here today. Um, so first off, I just want to share with you um, the objectives, kind of what I kind of want you guys to get out of the talk today. So my perspective and experience on what it takes to win a scholarship, why you would why you should and would want to go after the All-American Scholarship, a couple quick keys for success, and then a breakdown of kind of what it would look like week per week. So first off, here is just a little bit about me and my journey. So I started with Cutco back in um, 2020, early summer, like Memorial Day weekend. Um, I ended up having an 8.5K fast start. I started off in the North Shore office. Um, North Shore office is kind of known for having multiple 10K fast starts for training class um, a lot during the summer. So when I got 8.5, I was kind of discouraged and um, I was kind of bothered by the fact that I didn't do as well as a lot of people in my training class did. So I was kind of put down by that. Um, but about another week into the job, I realized that um, I'm capable of so much more. So I decided to go after something bigger. So I sold at least 1K per week every single every single week of the summer. I'll show you guys um, my actual stats per week at, towards the end. Um, but I ended up getting K Club for SC1. I remember telling my manager, hey, I really want to go really big. I want to do 10K. Um, I ended up not pushing myself enough because I had no idea how to do it. So I ended up doing 3K for the SC1 push. So when it came to the SC2 push, I really wanted to work hard. I went to the Alliance every single morning, worked really hard, had people by my side help me, and I did 15K um, for the SC2 push. And then for SC3 push towards the end of the summer, I did 13K. So for the entire summer, I did $46,000 um, sold with a Cutco, and it ended up being a number, th number 35 representative in the world. So I know those stats might look a little bit overwhelming to you guys right now. So the three main ones I want you to pay attention to are the at least 1K per week the entire summer, the 15K SC2 push, and the 13K SC3 push. So first off, why go after the scholarship? Honestly, like, why the heck not? Like, you never, don't knock it till you try it kind of thing. Just go after it. You never know what could happen. I honestly did not, it's not like I went into the summer thinking, yeah, I'm going to go win this scholarship. I didn't know that I even had a chance until I think after SC2. So like when August came, like I didn't even understand that I was really in the running for it. I didn't really get it. Um, it's a really great thing to put in your resume. I think it's super cool that I can just kind of throw my resume all American scholarship winner, number 35 in the world, 2020. Like, I think that's really cool. Um, it's also a really good why for when you're selling. So if you don't really know what a why is, it's pretty much your motivation for selling Cutco and working really hard. And it also is what you're going to want to tell your customer on every single demo, because then they'll be more likely to want to help you out. They, When your customer knows that you have a reason for doing this job and a reason for selling and a reason for wanting to get better, they actually are a lot more likely to help you out. So I remember I put on my About Me page the entire summer, like I'm going out to the All-American Scholarship, I would be like, yeah, right now I'm a num number 120 in the world, whatever. Like I'm so close to top 50 and they would really like to help me get hit that milestone. So I think that was really cool and um, definitely would recommend putting that in your demo. And it's a really great motivation just for you, like personally, internally to want to work harder and sell more cut coat. Like I said, you'll you'll have way more motivation to sell more, whether that's during the summer, during whatever campaign you're trying to win a scholarship for, um, or just like in the future as well. Um, I'm just coming off of winter break where I ended up ended up selling almost sixteen thousand dollars just in January. I would have never been able to do that if it weren't for me having that huge that huge summer and selling forty six thousand dollars because I came into January knowing what I was capable of no matter how much I didn't want to sell during that January push um no, coming off of what I had in the summer it helped me so much to be able to do that in January it's also a really great milestone to be able to say that you accomplished this much in the summer or for any campaign winning a scholarship. It's really amazing to be able to say that you're a Cutco scholarship winner because not a lot of people can say that. Um, it also made me realize that I was way more capable of 
things that I just didn't realize before. After my fast start, I mean, I was disappointed with my 8.5K, but that's because there are so many people around me that were doing 10 times better than I, were, than I was. Um, but just the 8.5K made me realize that I'm capable of way more than I ever expected that I could be from the beginning. And also just by doing the, just by going after the scholarship, selling more, you'll make so much more, so much more money. I guarantee that none of your, none of your college friends, none of your high school friends, none of your friends outside of this business are going to be making near what you will make this summer. All right, so what does it take? What does it look like? So it's really consistent selling. I was consistent the entire summer. I made sure to sell at least 1K per week. So I ended up getting K Club. Um, I think it was like first week of August I achieved that. Um, I didn't go one week under 1K until after SC2 when I took like a little bit of a break because I was kind of white from the rest of the summer. And that way I had momentum towards the end um, or more energy towards the end to push so I could win the scholarship, but it's really important to be consistent. It's also really important to recommit every single day. So I know it might be kind of difficult. Um, that kind of goes with like never giving up. Um, but if you just take it one day at a time, one week at a time, you recommit every single day, reevaluate your goals, reevaluate your priorities, reevaluate why you're going after the scholarship and what you want out of it. Um, cause if you do that, then you'll be much more successful and much more likely to not be overwhelm overwhelming yourself. It's also really important to be working with your manager every single day, talk with them on the phone, even if it's a five minute conversation in the morning for PDI every single day, that's gonna help a ton. Um, I remember I talked to Brian pretty much every single day from SC2 to the end of the summer. And I talked to him a little bit in the earlier summer too, but I talked to other managers as well every single day. And it's super important to just connect with them, um, kind of go over how you did the day before, go over what you're doing for the next day or the day of, and kind of like reevaluate what you can doing, what you've been doing right, what you've been doing wrong, what you can fix, things like that. It just helps you be such a better rep and develop more of those skills. It's also really important to be a leader for other reps. So whether that's taking them field training, uh, going like we're having them go reverse field training, field training, things like that. Um, you going field training on higher reps, demos, things like that. It's really important to just be involved with the other reps because if you do it, they'll do it. So that kind of helps like build the office as well. I kind of talked about never giving up with recommitting every single day, but it's also really important to plan ahead and prioritize. One thing I wish I did better over the summer was planning my weeks ahead better. I was pretty good with planning ahead demos, things like that. Um, especially when a push, I was very organized, but the things that I didn't organize was like me time, working out, um, doing my schoolwork. I still did all of those things, but I put it on the back burner. So I would do it at these random times. Then I would kind of like get burnt out. So I would be ended up doing my schoolwork at like nine o'clock at night and still have two, three hours of school to do. There are even some days where I would work out at like midnight because I had to get it done, but I didn't plan it ahead of time. So I learned from that and got better as it, uh, as the summer went on. So I ended up getting better about it. But it's really important to plan ahead and prioritize what you want to do every single day and make sure that you're prioritizing yourself and not just work as well, because it's super important to do that. If you don't prioritize yourself and your well-being, then you're never going to be successful. All right, so here are my keys for success. Um, first one is mindset, strategy, and then perseverance. So I'll go over those separately. First off with mindset, it's really important to take it one week at a time. Um, so I'm going to be honest, I didn't really th actually think about the scholarship until probably early slash mid-August. All the way up to it, I was just thinking about the week ahead of me. So I was thinking about how many demos I wanted to do. I wasn't thinking about, oh, I have to do this many demos this week so that I'll get the scholarship in the end. I was literally thinking about how many demos I want to do this week that's going to fit in my schedule. I didn't care if that lined up with the scholarship. I didn't care if it lined up with my, with my goals for the scholarship. None of that. You focus on the week ahead of you 
and you take it one week at a time because it will relieve so much stress if you just focus on one chunk at a time. And that just taught me a bunch um, because I wasn't really like quote unquote stressed about the scholarship until probably two or three weeks before the end of the summer. Um, So focus on what you can control, not what you can't. It's really important to focus on um, the good outcomes, even the bad ones, and turning those around. Um, I'll skip right to the last bullet point, but Danny has taught me that a bad day is is not a bad day. It's a, it's a character building day. So turn those bad days into character building days. If you turn something, turn a negative thing into a positive thing, it actually makes the biggest difference. I'm a very realistic and sometimes pessimistic person. So I kind of learned this the hard way, but if you turn negatives into a positive, it genuinely makes the biggest difference in the long run. And positivity can have such a big impact on your well-being, on how successful you are, things like that. So it's really important just to stay positive throughout the entire process, even though you're gonna have so many ups and downs, like selling and Cutco is such a roller coaster ride, especially during like a push, like during an entire summer for sure. I remember there were so many times where I was down during the summer, like during a push, whatever, just during a week where I was like, behind or um stuff like that it was really difficult for me so i just kind of try to turn those into a positive thing and focus on what was ahead of me so i focused on what i could control and what not on not on what i couldn't also you got to you got to be in the mindset of creating your own destiny if you want something to happen you got to go after it you can't wait for people to make it happen for you because you are the only one that can do it for yourself If you want something, ask for it. If you want someone to buy a homemaker, ask for the order. Ask for the order multiple times until they say yes. That's how I got a lot of my sales was asking multiple times. If you want to go after the scholarship, you got to do multiple demos. Ask multiple times for the homemaker. Ask for the signature. Ask for the ultimate. If you don't ask, if you don't go after what you want, create inner destiny, it's never going to happen. I also learned that anyone can do it. So if you think you're kind of just like an average Joe, um, I thought that myself, like I was like, why am I special? I'm not. I just worked really freaking hard over the summer and I went after what I wanted. So I ended up getting it. So if you work really hard, if this is something that you genuinely want and you really want to go after the scholarship, I would just say work really freaking hard. And if people say you can't do it, prove them wrong. Um, My parents, my dad and stepmom told me multiple times I couldn't do it. So I just knew I had to prove them wrong because I wanted this so badly. And they told me multiple times I couldn't do it. Um, Don't tell me I said that. Um, But yeah, they told me multiple times that I couldn't do it. And I knew I had to prove them wrong. They told me no in the push. They told me no for the summer. So just that kind of fueled my fire and made me want to go out to the scholarship even more. So if people say no, just say, okay, I'll see you at the end of the summer after in the scholarship and leave them. If they're going to give you negative energy, leave them. Go after what you want and turn negative situations into positive situations. Okay, so here's kind of like my strategy, uh, quote unquote. So it's really important to go to conferences. It's really important to go to divisional meetings. Going to conferences and divisional meetings are huge because you get to lead. You get to be the most influential person in your office. I didn't realize this until I think a couple months later, but um, and after Danny and Brian and people have told me, but I was a pretty influential person in my office for the summer because I was selling consistently, because I was selling so much, because I was going after such a big goal. I remember after SE2, I implemented so much what I learned from the conference into my demo that it just helped me explode in August to have my biggest month ever. So it's really important to not only go to the conferences, individual meetings, but to take what you learn from those meetings and to actually implement it in whether that's your demo, whether that's phoning skills, whether that's just like life skills, organization, things like that, is to take what you learn from these conferences and implement that. 
So um, a little breakdown of what it looks like week per week to sell. A 1K week kind of looks like this. So it's about an average order of 300. Number of phone calls you're going to want to want going to want to make per week about 25 to 35. You can knock that all out on a Sunday during like a 7 to 9 p.m. phone jam. You can even make more. But that's pretty much like one night of phoning about like maybe two hours max, depending on if you want to do more or less. Number of demos you're going to want to do per week is about five to seven. That's maybe like two to three days of demos. That's like two demos a day. Really not bad at all. Number of sales per week is about three to four. And the number of recs that you're going to generate from that is anywhere 20 to 50. It can even be more if you're really good at recs or if you're using like the Vector Impact app. I know a lot of people have had success with that. People are getting like 25 recs to 50 recs on one demo. So you can um, theoretically have a lot of recs generated and give you momentum for the next week. So you do that for about six weeks. It's about 6K. Sometimes you a little bit sell a little bit more. So that's good. That's good as well. And then a three to five K week, same thing, average order of 300 number of phone calls you're going to want to make per week is about 75 to 85. So you could do that for a couple of hours on Sunday, knock that out, or you could do some on Sunday, some during the team meetings on Wednesday nights. Um, usually you phone for about an hour or two hours depends. Um, and you could also do Saturday mornings as well. So it's not much phoning outside of the actual team meetings that you're already going to go to. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Number of demos you're going to want to do per week is about 17 to 22. So you could do three demos per week um, for five days kind of thing, or four for five days, four for four days. Number of sales per week is about 10 to 15. Number of recs generated, 50 to 100. Again, there's a little bit more flexibility with that because if you're using the Vector Impact app, it's really good with recs, you can get a lot more. And that's about six, six weeks out of the summer. So that's about 12 weeks. Um, I think there's more than 12 weeks in the summer, but that's about how many weeks I was a part of the summer last year because I didn't start till Memorial Day weekend. So um, like I said, going to the conferences is really important because I learned so much from SC1, SC2, SC3, other like important divisional meetings. Um, I got so much out of those, but what really separated me from other people to win the scholarship was the way I implemented it. So I implement, implemented it into my demo. I implemented it into the way that I um, helped other reps. I implemented it into the organization of my life and schedule and things like that. I wasn't even expecting to be able to work in August because um, I'm a college athlete. I play soccer in college. We normally go back early August, but um, we got told that we weren't going to go back early August because our season got canceled. So I stayed the entire August um, at home and I got to sell. So I really maximized on the opportunity, took what I learned from SC2, and I just exploded on my demo. Um, what I did was I implemented like the salmon knife video. I was selling salmon knives left and right. I implemented other specialty pieces um, in, in my video and stuff like that. I got to know the pieces really well. So when people ask me, Hey, I cut a lot of this. What should I use? I'm like, Oh, use this knife. I know the knives like by the, like the back of my hand pretty easily because I took the time to learn them. And cause I knew it would help me be more successful in the future. So this is what my, um, my entire summer is basically like. So down here at the bottom is my first two weeks. So I did like 8,500, like I said, did that. And then I pretty much just sold 1,000 for about six weeks. So I did 1,000, I did 2,000 there, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. So I kind of just like lay low, did a couple of demos a week, did it th about 1,000 a week, nothing insane. And I did that because I really wanted to earn K Club. That was something that was really important to me. I didn't know how achievable it was, but then I realized um, I made time for it. So I was like, yeah, let's go after this. And I knew if I wanted the scholarship, I had to earn K Club as well. That's a definite yes, you need that. So I did that so I could build momentum up to SC2. So this is the first week of SC2. I did 7,000. Next week, 2,000. Next week, about 6,000. So I pushed really hard for those three weeks and then I took a nice break because I know I needed just some time for myself 
before um, the end of the summer came. So then the end of the summer came and I know I had to get back to work because I still had a long way to go. So I ended up doing about 13 K the last two weeks in order to hit my goal. Um, I honestly wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for me talking to managers every single day. So I would talk to Brian and Danny every single day. They would help me out. They'd be like, hey, you're here on the list. Keep going. Danny said you need to get to at least, I think it was like 40 or 45K to earn a scholarship. I said, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go over that because I just want to make sure. So like I said, I did 46K just to be sure. And um, I did demos all the way up until I left. So um, this is until the 3rd of, of September. I left on the 3rd of September for school. So I did it all the way up to there because I really wanted the scholarship. So this is just kind of what a summer as an All-American looks like. Not super complicated, a couple of thousand dollar weeks, a couple of pushes, pretty simple. And like I said, from that very first slide, my journey was pretty much a couple of 1000, six $1,000 weeks two weeks of a break, just under a thousand, and then a couple of push weeks, a three, a five, a seven, a five, a six, and a five. Nothing too complicated. All right. And then this is the la my last key for success. So perseverance. It's really important to have perseverance and to finish strong. Um, like you saw before, I did SC2, push really hard for that. I knew I needed a break because I couldn't push for five weeks in a row. I knew I, I knew I wouldn't be able to do that. So I wanted to take a break so that I would be able to push at the end. So that's why I took a little break and then did 6,000 one week, 5,000 the next to finish really strong during that scholarship. So whether that's fin finishing strong for the summer, finishing strong for the week, finishing strong for the day, it's really important to end on a good note so you can go to the next either day, week, month, feeling confident, feeling ready to crush the next one. Um, it's also really important to build yourself up, not, tear, not to tear yourself down. So this kind of goes with creating a positive experience out of a negative one. So um, just make sure to give yourself positive words of affirmation. If you need someone to hype you up, give me a call. I'm a pretty good hype man um, or hype woman. and um, yeah, definitely talk to your managers because they will help you out with this for sure. Um, also talk to your friends that you work with. Like I would talk to Audrey McVicker all the time. Um, she's one of my best Cutco friends and we would always be phoning together, working really hard together. She ended up selling 10,000 more than me last summer. Um, but I don't think I would have been able to sell 46,000 if it weren't for her, honestly, because I wanted to get as close to her number as I could and I cut it short by 10,000. So I got kind of far, but I wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for like the community and the people around me. Also take those, those no sales as a learning experience. It's really important to do that because like I said, they're character building, they're not bad days. They're not days to feel down. They're days to learn from. It's really important to never give up and also to have that post-conference pop. So right when you come up with a conference, Book your demos, take advantage of the night demos, take advantage of um, that moment that conference gets over, have a demo book so you can capitalize on that. Capitalize on the night ones, capitalize on the post-conference, capitalize on um, the pushes. People work so hard during the pushes, it's super easy to sell during a push because there's so much momentum from not only you, but from the entire office because everyone's constantly selling, so it just kind of hypes everyone up. So it's really important to have perseverance towards the end because that's what's going to make you really successful. All right. So thank you guys so much for having me talk today. I hope that you got a lot out of my message and um, go after the All-American Scholarship.